What if you could go back in time 10,000 years and talk to a caveman and ask it, is there any problems you would like solve? Like, what can I help you with? The caveman would probably say, uh, I wish my fire would stop going out and I wish I had a bigger boulder to block my cave so no animals come in here because that's annoying. Or if you were to go back in time 2 million years ago and talk to the prehistoric apes we were then and you said, isn't it so exciting that we're going to develop this prefrontal cortex, have the ability to reason and logic and we're going to develop the auditory cortex and have the ability to conceptualize, create, and understand music and have all of these different cultures that arise from that. Isn't that just so beautiful? And they wouldn't understand a single word you would say, and they would try to kill you. So let's ask ourselves, where are we on this evolutionary timeline right now? One thing we all need to remember is yes, change takes time, but technology accelerates change. We already know that technology doesn't scale linearly. This is something that compounds on itself and exponentially grows. But the question becomes, what happens when this exponential curve becomes almost vertical? This is the technological singularity where thousands or millions of years of change are compressed into a single decade. We can only imagine what society will actually look like whenever we go through this period. I'm just imagining pulling out my phone and looking at my newsfeed and seeing hundreds if not thousands of scientific breakthroughs every single minute. And I'm not talking about your average scientific breakthroughs that you'll see on a normal daily basis as we do today. I mean pivotal paradigm shifting breakthroughs where we can build entirely new paradigms of technology around this new breakthrough that we can hardly even fathom. And if you're skeptical of this, I recommend you do some research of somebody named Nima Arkani Hamid, who's a theoretical physicist studying things such as the amplitudehedron and higher dimensional space. So all of this is great, but how close are we to the singularity actually? Well, there's a group of people who thinks the singularity started in November 2023 when Sam Altman was fired from the board of OpenAI because Ilya Sutskiver scaled the strawberry model up to a sufficient extent in experiment where he saw behavior that was startling to say the least. It scared the shit out of him. He showed the board and he got Sam Altman removed. We all know the story. Not long after Sam Altman was brought back as CEO of OpenAI, and Ilya Sutskiver soon after left the company to start safe super intelligence, claiming they have a straight shot to super intelligence. I think Ilya's absolutely correct. He does have a straight shot to super intelligence. And I'm going to show you how a little bit later. My personal opinion, if you were to ask me, I think it's quite obvious that these companies already have enough compute to simulate something on the magnitude of the human brain. Therefore, the probability of them having an intelligent system that is comparable to humans at an AGI level is quite high considering the strawberry model that just dropped and how that basically simulates cognition. All we need is some continuous back propagation and an infinite context length, and it is AGI with sufficient scale. So the likelihood they actually have AGI is almost 100% in my book. But why do we need AGI to actually get to the singularity and how is it gonna get us to the singularity? Well, if we look at Sam Altman's definition of AGI, because he's the one creating it, it is AI that can create novel physics or it can make novel breakthroughs in physics, meaning it has the IQ of somebody like Albert Einstein or Ed Witten, or maybe even higher than that, because it's actually making breakthroughs and we haven't made substantial breakthroughs in physics in quite some time now. So if it's as smart as the smartest humans on earth, you can uh, imagine having a billion of these things all going throughout the entire world, solving all of these extremely complex problems and creating very powerful technologies and all of it just compounds on itself extremely aggressively. And these AI agents that we have created, these little AGIs will become super intelligent over a long enough time horizon because we are physically bound by the biological matter that makes up our computational system known as our brain. But the hardware that the AI uses is completely malleable. He can create an entirely new piece of hardware and uh, use that to increase its computational ability. So not long after its AGI, it will be super intelligent. And then not long after it's super intelligent, we're going to have to learn how to keep up and how do humans keep up with something they can hardly fathom? Let me ask you that question. Well, it's quite likely that we're going to have to become something different ourselves if we actually want to keep up with these things. The picture that everybody paints that these super intelligent beings are just going to be walking amongst us and they're gonna build their world around us for us and we don't ever evolve 
is painting a picture of our extinction over a long enough time horizon. If you extrapolate humans not uh, going through challenging problems and challenging problems are done for them indefinitely, here's the thing. It's a simple mathematical equation. Stress equals growth. Without growth, we decline. And without any incentives to grow, we will not be stressed enough to grow. Therefore, over a long enough time horizon, we will decline and the species we have created will be our successor. But why not use this hyper-intelligent species to augment our biology or transcend our biology by manipulating the atoms in our bodies or neurally augmenting ourselves with superintelligence, and then we can be on a comparable level to these things that we created. And now we can actually allocate our own effort to expanding consciousness throughout the universe and expanding our species throughout the universe, reducing the possibility of consciousness from going extinct on this side of the universe. I think this is where the talk should be, not how do we not do work ever again. I think that's a terrible thought experiment that leads to extinction whenever you extrapolate it outwards a million years from now. We already know that there is a subsection of the population who currently wants to augment themselves. They're so excited for the singularity and transhumanism and having the ability to transcend their current biology and increase their intelligence by a million fold because it is not physically impossible. It is physically possible to do something like this. And as we make breakthroughs of this caliber, it's very likely we'll have the ability to achieve immortality in some way, shape or form, where maybe we can back up our consciousness into some hard drive and we can instantiate it into different bodies or different forms of being again this is absolutely crazy but like anything is possible like be extremely open-minded in this time period because literally anything can happen just an example of something that we just discovered 10 years ago called the amplitohedron nima arkani hamid is the one who discovered this thing called the amplitohedron it's higher dimensional geometric structures that we can use some type of differential geometry to extrapolate out into millions of different dimensions that are theoretically out there and we can tie them down to the fabric of space-time. What people like Nima Arkani Hamid are saying is that there are other dimensions that potentially have other capabilities that we can create technologies around for us to harness. So there are going to likely be breakthroughs here and literally anything could possibly could come out of it. Maybe we could harness some capabilities in some other dimensions that help us manipulate the fabric of space-time. Maybe we'll have a device that gives us like telekinesis or something. I don't know. These ideas again sound crazy, but it is possible that this could arise or emerge from our new discoveries in the future as we go through this singularity. Something that I'm doing to help myself stay up to date and grounded in reality as we go through this transition is I'm studying physics, studying the laws of the universe and learning everything that I can about physics and the furthest cutting edge of theoretical physics because that's going to be where all of the big changes happen all of the changes that change the fabric of what we think reality is and how we interact with the universe as a whole these are where they're going to be found on these very very cutting edges of the theoretical physics this is going to be where we create new novel discoveries that can lead to new technologies that we were never we never thought were even possible and a good story is Back in the day, before the internet, before the transistor, or before com computers at all, there were these people having these ideas about leveraging computation and um, having the ability to create a computer and then eventually maybe even we could send a message through the air one day. Everybody thought these people were absolutely crazy. They thought they were bananas. Like, they literally thought they were spiritual gurus that, like, were completely disconnected from reality. Eventually, these theoretical physicists created a mathematical model that said, okay, this is possible. Like, we have math that says it works. Now we just need to create the technology. Then people said, okay, well, you're a theoretical physicist. You created this theory. You showed that it could be possible with math. But what does this even mean? What does this actually mean? Like, why should we care? And the physicist said, yes, this is theory today, but one day, you will be taxed on this. And this led to the invention of the transistor, which led to the invention of the computer, and then the internet. So the point is, physics is where we need to be focusing on. The theoretical physical limits of the universe, because that's going to be where all of the breakthroughs happen. That's how we're going to stay connected and grounded into reality, and how we're going to understand the universe at a very simplistic fundamental level. Maybe not simplistic, but at a very fundamental level. While all of this has been 
kind of alarming sounding and kind of scary sounding in some cases. This is actually something that can be very beautiful. If we look at our civilization, we are very primal still. And if we look at what would happen if we have some type of super intelligent entity helping us solve our problems, what would the world become? What would it begin to look like? Well, we would solve all of our energy problems. We would solve all of our environmental issues. We would solve all of these different issues and we would be able to have a type one civilization for the first time ever. We are currently a type zero civilization on the Kurdishev scale. And if you don't know what the Kardashev scale is, it's basically something that Nikolai Kardashev uses to measure if we were to find an alien civilization, how advanced they were. And it's based on the amount of energy consumption that we use from our nearest star or the sun. A type one civilization uses as much energy that the star projects onto its home planet. A type two civilization uses all of the energy of its star, and then a type three civilization uses all of the energy of its galaxy, or not all of it, but a, a, a good amount of energy in the galaxy. What this really means is we now have a more abundant society where resources are less scarce and individuals have a much higher level of living standards. Throughout the entire planet, the living standards of our species will rise, or whatever species we become will rise. And we will have these very uh, amazing things that can come out of this. We will exponentially explode as consciousness and intelligence throughout the cosmos. And this leads to a lot of interesting questions and a lot of interesting possibilities that we have never been faced with before. And as we go through the singularity, eventually we'll hit this thing called technological maturity, which could be the point at which we make first contact with aliens. There's this thing called the zoo hypothesis that states that there could be aliens out there that are currently watching us and observing and learning from our evolution, but they aren't interrupting because it would be unethical to do so. But as soon as we hit a certain level of technological maturity, they will slowly start to reveal themselves to us. And this begs the question, if we are this technologically mature, that we are able to be revealed to these aliens, what does that make us now? Are we now one of them? Are we now this alien species that is fundamentally different than what we were before? And I think the answer is yes. We will be something completely different than what we were as the homo sapiens we were before. But I think this is completely natural and completely positive, and we're going through a very natural evolutionary process. That about wraps up this video. If you stuck all the way through, I want to thank you, like, comment, subscribe. I have a free community for people just like you and I who like to talk about the singularity, physics, how we can stay on top of this technology, and Basically, we want to have a community where there's a whole bunch of people aware of these topics, where we can keep the velocity of information going very fast so that we have the greatest probability of um, staying on the cutting edge of uh, everything that will be happening very soon throughout the singularity. So feel free to join, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.